Sample number 22 is our gathered piece. Here is my finished sample. I have a flat piece and I have another piece that's much wider that I'm going to fit into this seam. You're going to cut your foundation piece, just one, and make sure to snip the notch. And then your gathered piece, which is cut one on the fold. When I, re when I take the pins out, I'm going to have this one shorter piece and I'm going to have the longer piece. One thing you want to get into the habit of doing when you cut something on the fold is to snip a notch right at that fold line. It's particularly important here because I know that half of my gathers need to go on this side of the foundation piece and half of my gathered side needs to go on this side of the, of the foundation piece. This eliminates any possibility of there being a flat area and then more gathering in one section. You want to make sure that you're gathering through a basting stitch and you're distributing that ease easily through. So like our eased sample where we had no pleats and no gathers, this is the opposite. You're going to use the same method, but we will make sure that we have plenty of gathers. The first step in stitching this is to clean finish the outer edges of your foundation piece and the outer edges of your gathered piece, leaving the seamed edge raw. And you know it's the seamed edge because we have clipped the notch on our foundation piece and we've clipped a notch at the fold line on our gathering piece. Our next step will be to run a basting stitch on the gathered piece only with a half an inch seam allowance from beginning to end right across. Remember, do not lock the stitch at the beginning or the end because we're going to use this to actually gather to fit into the foundation piece. So remember, when you're doing a basting stitch, you're going to turn your stitch length up so that you have a longer stitch. If you're using an industrial machine, you can turn it to a four. If you are using your home sewing machine, you'll have to look at the manual if you don't know how to increase the stitch length. I'm going to put it under a half an inch. And remember, basting stitch is temporary, so I can take it out after. I'm not going to lock it at the beginning of the end. I'm simply going to run a stitch all along. Now comes the fun part. We're going to create our gathers in this piece to fit here. If I look at these pieces on the half, I have my notch here and I have a notch here. So when I line this up, I can see that this amount has to gather into this amount and finish at the same edge. So I'm going to take my basted piece and remember how we did in the ease seam. This is, I've turned over to the wrong side. I'm going to pull just my bottom thread. You don't want to pull the top thread because you'll actually lock the stitch and you will not be able to do any more gathering. And I am just going to pull through and gather. I'm going to do the other side the same way, just the bottom thread and I'm going to gather that. I've done my gathering and I've made my gathered piece the same length as my foundation piece. When I've got to that point, I'm going to take my top thread and pull that. And now it's kind of locked so that my gathers can't fall off either edge. This is going to take some practice. So don't get discouraged. Take your time and just make sure it looks right. You, what you don't want to do is have any flat areas and then have lots of gathering in one area. You want to distribute this gather at ease evenly so that it creates a very cohesive look where it looks even all around. That looks pretty good to me. So now I'm going to find my notch and I am going to match it to my foundation piece and I'm going to pin across. I'm going to pin at the beginning of my seam and I'm going to pin at the end of my seam and I'm going to fit everything else in between and pin it down. So I've pinned all my gathers in. I'm going to leave my, my threads hanging. Don't cut them because your gathers will come out. Now I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to stitch, locking my stitch with a regular stitch. So for a, an industrial, it's going to be a two and a half stitch. For your home machine, adjust accordingly for a permanent stitch. I'm going to 
I'm going to stitch on the gathered edge, not the flat side. And I'm going to stitch a half an inch all the way through and locking at the end also. And that way I can manipulate to make sure that the gathers are going in nicely and that the seam allowance lays flat. So lock it. I'm going to remove my pins as I get close and I'm going to make sure that all of those gathers stay in place as I stitch permanently through the foundation piece. And finish right to the end and lock your stitch. When you're done, fold it back to the right side and take a look and see how you feel about it. This looks pretty good to me. If I have any threads, if I have my red basting line, which I have a stitch right there, but if you have a consistent row, you can just go ahead and you can take that stitching out with your seam ripper or your scissors or whatever tool you want to use. But you do not need to keep that basting stitch in because that's just a temporary. Now you have your permanent. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go overlock these two seams together as if they are one. And then I'm going to press my foundation piece up. You don't want to press your gathers down. You don't want them to be flat with crease marks in them. Here's my final piece. It's all clean. I've clipped my threads. I've overlocked. I personally like to take my gathering stitches out just because I like the way it looks on the back. I like that it's nice and neat. And you are finished.